Hi, am I in the air? Well, what is going down, everybody, and welcome back to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega, and I'm your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me once again to get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news and television movies and non-spoiler reviews. You come right here to Am I on the Air? It's season 28, episode 2, and tonight's show is titled Work Hard, Fail Hard. That's right. We're going to be breaking down the news from January 3rd through today, January the 9th. We're broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios here on this Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. Going to be talking a couple movies, a couple TV shows, then of course, we'll get you caught up with everything that's gone down in the last week of entertainment news, okay? Let's jump on in. Got a couple movie reviews for you, three to be exact, but all three are a little bit old. That's right, I'm playing a little bit of catch-up as... 2023 was wrapping down and we we're getting into 2024. I was like, you know, there's a couple movies still that I want to catch up on. So in any of my free time, I've been kind of going back through the queue and trying to catch up on some stuff. And the first movie that I j- caught up on was Blackberry. Now, I don't know why it took me so long with this one because I was really looking forward to this movie. This is the true story about the Blackberry cell phone, which I personally have had several models of these. I had the Pearl, I had the big one, I had the, um, the uh, God, I can't remember what um, one of the other big models was with the trackpad, and then I had the Storm, the infamous Blackberry Storm, which was the first touchscreen one, and pretty much the, almost the last Blackberry that was to come out uh, as basically the iPhone hit the market and became the Blackberry killer. Um You know, so this movie here about two mismatched entrepreneurs, egghead innovator Mike Lazardis and cutthroat businessman Jim Basil. They join forces in an endeavor that was to become a worldwide hit in a little more than a decade. The story of the meteoric rise and catastrophic catastrophic demise of the world's first smartphone. That's right. This was the first big device that did email and it did text messaging and it was super secure. I've worked in the wireless industry for over 20 years. I was there when the BlackBerry came out, and I remember how popular those damn things were, especially if you were a businessman, especially if you needed that private kind of email instant, being able to reply to my emails and send stuff that no other phone could do, the BlackBerry did it. And this movie here stars uh, Jay Barichell, who's always great in everything he does, but he usually does bigger, straight-up comedies. It was great to see him do something like this. Glenn Howerton, ladies and gentlemen, steals the show in this movie, um, which is just, you know, it's crazy. Like, he's unrecognizable in this role. You know Glenn Howerton from, like, Always Sunny in Philadelphia or AP Bio. He's super, like, usually your typical over-the-top comedian kind of character. He was a cutthroat businessman in this, and he was phenomenal. Uh, Carrie Ells pops up in this. Michael Ironside, uh, Martin Donovan. There's a bunch of people, a lot of faces you'll see pop up, character actors. But this movie was phenomenal. I loved it. It was not only, I super dig true stories, but when they do them in a fun way and they don't bog it down and it was funny and it had drama and it was just cool seeing how this device came to be, the big rise of it and then the fall of it. It was so damn interesting and I absolutely loved it. So I highly recommend you check out Blackberry. I give this one four out of five stars. This is streaming on AMC Plus right now. Um, and also what AMC did with this um, recently in the last couple of weeks, they actually took this movie and they broke it into a three part mini series. Um, so probably like, you know, like 40 minute episodes, 40, 45 minute episodes um, and broke it down into a limited series, mini series, which is really interesting, but I preferred to watch it as a movie. I, I don't see the point of watching it in a mini series, but if that's easier for you to digest, <clears throat> take a look at AMC. I believe AMC Plus is offering it in the miniseries as well. 
Either way, I say make sure you check out Blackberry, four out of five stars. Now, my next true story that I jumped into, another movie that came out a couple months ago and never got around to, was Tetris. The uh, true story about the video game Tetris. That's right. In 1988, American video game salesman Hank Rogers discovers the video game Tetris. When he sets out to bring the game to the world, he enters a dangerous web of lies and corruption behind the Iron Curtain. That's right. This one here is led by Taron Egerton. I love Taron, man. He's always so great in everything he does from Eggsy and the Kingsman to Blackbird last year. Just when he pops up, he gives it his all, and I love it. He was great. Great as the Tetris salesman here. So this movie, I could not believe. Now, yes, I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. I played video games. Tetris was huge. Who would have thought in 2023 a movie would come out showing us the incredible story about how this game was made in Russia and Russia was holding the rights and there was like espionage and there was the KGB was involved and Uh, Different publishers thinking they had the rights But they didn't have the rights And everybody being threatened and trying to get the rights It's an incredible story guys And another one that man I was already coming off the high of Blackberry And I went right into this and was like Oh my god this is incredible as well How did I miss these two movies in 2023 Catch up if you can Tetris is streaming on Apple TV Plus It's phenomenal And definitely another highly highly recommended film Check out Tetris, four out of five stars. What a story, man. I was blown away when this movie ended. So there you go, man. Blackberry and Tetris, two four out of five star true story films. Make sure you check those out. Then we go to Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, right? This came out uh, in October, right before Halloween. And I've had it in my queue, and I was excited for it. But then I heard some ho-hum things. So... It's just been kind of sitting there, and I find, like, you know what? Let me get into it. Let's get through it. In 1969, a young Judd Crandall has dreams of leaving his hometown of Ludlow, Maine behind, but soon discovers sinister secrets buried within and is forced to confront a dark family history that will forever keep him connected to love. So this is a prequel. This is actually a prequel to the reboot that came out in, like, 2019 or 2020. Um, So uh, interesting stuff right there. And this movie sucks. (laughs) That's right. This movie is horrible. And it's got a couple good actors in it. You got David Duchovny in here. And and the younger actors are people that are up and coming. And they're really trying to give it their all in this. But I can't. I can't. I can't tell you anything really positive about this. It's not scary. It's stupid. The plot's stupid. It just doesn't really go anywhere and you kind of understand why this is a paramount plus original this movie did not go to theaters and it's a good thing that it hit streaming when it did and that's all about all the time i'm gonna waste on this one so pet cemetery bloodlines stay with us we'll be right back hey i'm james lavino and i'm here to tell you about alternate sides a movie podcast with a twist I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Saab, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's alternate side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing, Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. I'll give it a two. Two out of five, and that's being generous. So there you go. I didn't absolutely hate it. But I didn't really like it either. Um, you know, it it tries. And for that, I'll give it two stars. But man, what a letdown. So uh, yeah, there's your three movies right there. Switch on over to TV. The only new show that I checked out was A Murder at the End of the World. 
And this one here is a new mini series that is on Hulu. Um, it stars Emma Corinne, who is really blowing up right now. Um, but you got Britt Marlene, who did the OA over on Netflix. Uh, Clive Owen is in this. Alice Braga, who's always great when she pops up in things. Jermaine Fowler's in this as well, too. So it's got a really cool, decent cast. Um, and this one here is about a, a you know a bunch of people kind of being brought out to this really crazy kind of hotel out in uh, Antarctica. And then someone dies and we're trying to figure out what is what. Now, this show is being positioned as like a young Sherlock Holmes or like an Agatha Christie kind of novel. It's just okay for me. I'm, let me see, there's about, I think there's seven episodes of this show. I've watched the first three or four. It's slow. It's a very slow burn. It's not horrible, but it's not a real fun show either to watch. Like I wanted kind of more out of it. And it just kind of peters through. Um, I will continue it though. And I will finish it. I just, I was really hoping for more out of this show because the trailer was really, really good and I was stoked on it, but it just kind of chugs along and, and we'll see, maybe the back half of the series will really pick up, but right now it's just kind of um, in the middle for me right now. But this is uh streaming, I believe. I don't know if all the episodes are out yet, or it might be finishing here soon, because I did start it a couple weeks late, um, but you can stream it right now on Hulu. And then uh, America's Got Talent is back with their new version, it's called AGT Fantasy League, so with this version of the show this year, um, each judge has created their own team, their own Fantasy League team, and they're competing to see you know who wins, who's the best of the best and they're bringing back obviously a lot of the big dogs from all the previous seasons and they're battling it out so i love agt and having a show like this where they're bringing back the big dogs is awesome because every act is really really great and you're seeing them kind of compete uh and the judges compete which is also a nice little twist so i like it so check out agt fantasy league it streams every monday on nbc and then it hits peacock on tuesdays and then lastly, another older show that I, I mean, this is way older, that I got into because I watched a countdown over the weekend that was like the top 10 comedy shows of like the last century. And as I'm going through the shows, one of the shows that popped up was Nathan For You, starring Nathan Fielder. Um, I'm actually watching Nathan right now in The Curse over on Showtime, um, but I never watched Nathan For You. But watching them show these clips on this countdown... And talking about the premise of the show, I was like, wow, that actually looks pretty funny. And then my wife was like, yeah, we should check it out. So we searched it up and found it on Max. So started streaming it. There's four seasons. We're already on season two. It's an easy binge. The episodes are only about 20 minutes. And um, it is a real life camera kind of show where he is going to struggling businesses and offering to help them. But his offer of help is the gag, right? Like he comes up with a crazy concept and then tries to get these owners to buy into it while he films, obviously, the reaction. So they think they're going on a reality show about a guy that, that can help businesses. And he just comes up with these most insane things. Um, it's crazy the stuff he comes up with. Sometimes borderlining him getting arrested for what he's doing. Um, you know, he does dust Starbucks and he does uh he tries to help like a pet cemetery um place with like a big advertising tombstone in a graveyard and he tries to help like a, a shop on Hollywood strip, you know, by putting out a fake Johnny Depp. And he just does all these different things. And it, it's actually really hilarious. I am loving it. Like I said, I'm almost done with season two, ready to go into season three. And the first two seasons are drop dead hilarious. I laugh my ass off on every single episode. The guy is so weird, but so funny and so smart. Um, so, Hey, just, if you're looking for something fun to watch and you like kind of like a, Hidden camera, true story, real reaction kind of thing, but in a comedy way, I definitely think you should check out Nathan for you. And you can check out all four seasons over on Max. And that's what I got from a review side. So once again, Blackberry over on AMC Plus, um, four or five stars. Tetris, four out of five stars, streaming on Apple TV Plus. Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, two out of five stars, streaming over on Paramount Plus. 
AGT Fantasy League on Peacock, A Murder at the End of the World on Hulu, and Nathan for You on Max. All right, guys, let's talk box office real quick. Coming in number 10, it's Poor Things. Number 9 is Ferrari. Number 8 is The Iron Claw. Number 7, The Color Purple. Number 6, The Boys in the Boat. Number 5, Anyone But You. Number 4, Migration. Number 3, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Number 2, Night Swim. This is your big debut here at number 2 with Night Swim. Usually these horror movies do really, really well opening weekend, but this one failed to hit. Um, And number 1, man, Wonka. Killing it, dude. Four weeks out, still number 1. Um, raking in that money. Walk is a great movie, guys. Definitely check it out. I was going to check out Night Swim, but I've heard nothing but negativity about this film. Nobody has seemed to like it that I care about. So I'm like, you know what? I guess I'll wait for streaming on this one. And uh, based on the box office, it probably won't take very long to get there. All right, guys, let's switch gears and get into our news of the week. And I'm going to actually start with the Golden Globes. So the Golden Globes was this past Sunday night. And um, this is kind of your prelude to the Oscars. And um, so I was curious to see where everything kind of fell. So I'm going to run through the winners real quick. Best Motion Picture Drama went to Oppenheimer. Best Motion Picture Musical or Comedy went to Poor Things. Animated went to The Boy and the Heron. Non-English Language went to Anatomy of a Fall. Cinematic and Box Office Achievement, which was one of the new um, categories, went to Barbie. Um, Best Performance by an Actor in a Motion Picture Drama went to Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. Best Performance by an Actress in a Motion Picture Drama went to Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon. Best Performance by an Actor in a Motion Picture Musical or Comedy went to Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers, which is also now streaming on Peacock, by the way, if you'd like to check out that film. Best Performance by an Actress in a Motion Picture Musical or Comedy went to Emma Stone for Poor Things. Best Performance by a Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture went to Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Best Performance by a Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture went to Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. Best Director went to Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. Best Screenplay went to Anatomy of a Fall. Original Score went to Oppenheimer. Original Song went to What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish and Phineas for the Barbie movie. On the television categories, Best Television Series Drama went to Succession. Musical or Comedy Best TV Show went to The Bear, which is awesome. By the way, I just finished The Bear both seasons. Love it. So I was so happy to see the big winnings here for The Bear. Can't wait for Season 3. Best Limited Series, Anthology Series, or Motion Picture Made for Television went to Beef, which is awesome. Beef was one of my favorite shows of the year as well. Best Performance by an Actor in a Television Series Drama went to Kieran Culkin for Succession. Best Performance by an Actress in a Television Series Drama went to Sarah Snook for Succession. Best Performance by an Actor in a Television Series Music or Comedy went to Jeremy Allen White for The Bear, well, well well-deserved. Best Performance by an Actress in a Television Series Music or Comedy went to A.O. Edabiri for The Bear, also very well well-deserved. Best Performance by an Actor in a Limited Series Anthology Series or Motion Picture Made for Television went to Steven Yoon for Beef, Awesome. Best performance by an actress in the same category went to Ali Wong for Beef. Awesome. Best performance by a supporting actor in a series, limited series, anthology series, or motion picture made for television went to Matthew McFadden for Succession. Best performance by a supporting actress, same category, went to Elizabeth Debicki for The Crown. And best performance in a stand-up comedy for television went to Ricky Gervais for his comedy special, Ricky Gervais Armageddon. So there you guys go. That is the Golden Globes winners. And if you like to stream it, if you missed the uh, presentation on Sunday, you can stream it over on Paramount Plus now as well. All right, let's get into our full news of the week. And remember, you could check out all the trailers and all the news, everything coming down, mainly on our X page. That's right. Go to twitter.com slash am I on the air, whether you're on Twitter or not, and you can view everything we talk about. Okay. We have the new trailer for Death and Other Details. This is Mandy Patikin's new Hulu murder mystery series. I watched the trailer for this, and it looks good, and I will check it out. My problem with it, though, is this is a complete ripoff of uh, the Hurko Pole movies, right? Like um, um, Murder on the Orient Express and um, Death on the Nile. This looks like totally one of those. Like, Mandy Patinkin is Hukuro Puro, <laughs> the Kenneth Branagh character, right, from those movies. That's exactly what this is, man. But I guess that kind of stuff is in right now, right, with uh, Poker Face and um, 
knives out you know and then obviously the hooker movies so but check it out i think it does look good and i'll definitely check it out over on hulu when it debuts in about a week or so we have the new trailer for feud capote versus the swans this is the next installment coming to fx for its anthology series um george clooney teases a new brad pitt movie um called wolves this is a new movie they did together and he says it feels like an r-rated oceans film i love the sound of that that's definitely a way to get me in uh peaky blinders movie hmm, that's right steven knight says he is writing the final bits of the script so it looks like it is going to be moving forward and that is awesome um we have the first omen trailer that's right uh previewing the terrifying horror prequel uh i'm not a big fan of the omen thought this trailer was just so so but you could check it out for yourself spider-man across the spider-verse is going to be returning to imax theaters later this month that'll be pretty cool to see that again um uncle samsick parasite star song kang ho will lead the disney plus and hulu series that is coming soon here um Pete Davidson's new comedy special Turbo Fonzarelli has hit Netflix today, so um, jump on your Netflix and check that out if you'd like to see some stand-up. Morris Chestnut is set to star in a new Sherlock Holmes-inspired series called Watson, which is going to be based on a modern-day type of Watson, so there you go there. Margot Robbie thinks other actresses playing Harley Quinn will only help secure the character's legacy. She says she's not sure if she'd return to do it. She always envisioned the role to go to other female artists. But James Gunn, on the other hand, says, you know, hey, I don't plan to have anyone else play Harley but Margot Robbie. Um, And if she doesn't do Harley, then I'd like her to do something else in the DCU. So we'll see, man. Harley should, um, or Margot, should be sticking around there. I love her, Harley Quinn. I think she's fantastic as Harley. And I would love to see her kind of stick around. But I know it gets harder and harder with this DCU reboot. So we'll see where it goes. In some bummer news, Steven Yoon has dropped out of the Thunderbolts. That's right, the new Marvel film, Thunderbolts. The word was he was going to be playing Sentry. That was never confirmed. Um, But he says, you know, because of the strikes and everything getting shifted and he's got scheduling problems now and he just can't do it. Uh, He says he'd still love to make a Marvel movie and he hopes to do one down the road. Um, But he just, the schedule doesn't line up for him to be able to do Thunderbolts. And that is a bummer. So he has to uh, leave that project there. But this is really cool. Gerard Butler will reprise his role in the live action How to Train Your Dragon movie that they're doing. Um, Gerard Butler plays the main kid's dad in all the animated films. So pretty cool there that he's going to reprise his role in the live action. I like that they're starting to do this a little bit more like the rock coming in to play Maui in the Moana movie. I I like when the voice actor gets to step in and kind of do it in live action. Why not? Right. It did. That's where I would start if I was making one of these movies. Uh, Julia Garner has joined the cast of the Blumhouse movie Wolfman, so that's awesome. Julia Garner is fantastic, so I can't wait to see her in that. That definitely raises the stakes for me there. Skydance is going to be adapting the fantasy novel Ranger's Apprentice into a live-action movie. Minx has been canceled for the second time. That's right, it ends after two seasons. Uh, Jake Johnson was just talking a week or two ago about how he felt like this was coming. Minx was an HBO Max show, got canceled, Stars picked it up, did the second season, and now it's canceled again. So very unfortunate. I liked Minx, but um, you know, I can understand. It's hard, man, especially when you're on Stars. Just not a lot of people have Stars. You know, I like the network. But a lot of people just don't have it. And when you got so many streamers, it's hard to have stars. Oprah Winfrey is looking to adapt The Covenant of Water. The Covenant of Water as her next movie. So that looks like something from her book club there that she wants to adapt. Samuel Jackson is joining Fight Night, the Million Dollar Heist cast. So this is awesome. Uh, This cast is really starting to shape up. And it's always a great addition to get Samuel Jackson involved. Um, James Gunn says uh, they're getting ready to prep to start Peacemaker Season 2 pre-production. This is awesome. It's about damn time. We've been waiting. Do you really want to taste it? And we are ready for some more Peacemaker for sure. Heat 2. It will be a prequel and a sequel. That's right. And it has got filming planned for 2024. Cruella 2 is still moving forward with Emma Stone. The White Lotus Season 3 has officially added Leslie Bibb and Michelle Monaghan to the cast. So that's pretty awesome there. Love me some Michelle Monaghan. Uh, Scott Grimes and Seth MacFarlane of the Orville say that the show is not dead yet. They said it has not been um, canceled. 
And so they're still holding out hope to do some more. So we'll see what happens with that. American Born Chinese has officially been canceled after just one season on Disney+. Plus. Um, Steven Yoon, again, reportedly reteaming with his Minari director for a new romance movie. We have the new trailer for The Woman in the Wall, which is Showtime's new thriller series. Um, the White Lotus Season 3 is also looking at Carrie Coon for the cast. That would be another amazing addition. Matthew Vaughn hopes that Argyle will have at least two sequels. I'm looking forward to this, man. Argyle, I think, is going to be a really awesome movie. Comes out in February. Very, very stoked. Um, Topher Grace and Michelle Dockery have joined Mark Wahlberg in his new thriller, Flight Risk. Uh, Kihu Kwan will lead a new universal action movie called With Love. Joe Keery becomes a criminal for the girl of his dreams in the new trailer for Marmalade. John Williams withdraws his retirement plans and he will return for a movie that he's, quote, greatly interested in. Ooh, I wonder what pulled him out of retirement. We will see. We have the trailer for On the Rome, which is Max's new Jason Momoa documentary series that he's doing. Next Goal Win is coming soon to digital Blu-ray and DVD for the sports comedy there from Taika Waititi. Benny Safdie says Uncut Gems follow up with Adam Sandler and Megan Thee Stallion is on pause currently right now. We have the season two trailer for Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Godzilla X Kong director calls the new villain the greatest threat we've ever seen. I love that, man. We got to turn it up. We got to turn it up. We got a really cool article up with Dwayne The Rock Johnson talking about new details for his new A24 movie, The Smashing Machine. We talked about him signing on to this and this just being his really big kind of acting turn for The Rock, right? That this could get him an Oscar. This could get him some nominations if he plays it right. And he says, you know, that he's looking for more and more roles like this as he, you know, as his career continues to evolve, that he still likes making the big action movies and the franchise films, but he also wants to start layering more and more movies like this. And I'm really excited, man. I think the smashing machine is going to be great. So check out the full article. If you want to know more, um, over on echo echo starts today. Um, it hasn't dropped yet as of me recording. It actually comes out tonight. Um, at 6 p.m., it'll hit Disney Plus all five episodes. And supposedly, we know Daredevil's going to be in it, but he's not the only cameo in the MCU series. That's what the director says. I wonder who else could pop up in Echo. Very, very interesting. We'll have to see here. Hopefully, it doesn't get spoiled for me. But yeah, Echo comes out tonight. Make sure you check out Disney Plus all five episodes and set your um, tuner there to make sure that it's set to mature or you won't be able to watch it because it is. Write it down for mature. Killers of the Flower Moon, Apple TV Plus release date. It is coming out this week on Apple TV Plus, so make sure you check that out. Let me see here. Give me one sec. Sorry about that. All of a sudden, I started hearing music blasting from the other room, and my echo somehow started <laughs> started blasting music on Spotify without anyone starting that very very creepy all right um let's see here where were we ncis prequel series about a young gibbs has officially been ordered over on cbs patrick stewart says that a new star trek picard movie script is actually in the works that's right not another show or a season on paramount plus but a movie so stay tuned on that star trek picard right there um so yeah, so where were we on the White Lotus? We had Leslie Bibb, Jason Isaacs, Michelle Monaghan, Parker Posey, Dom Hetrickel, and Tame Thwapa Thwingthong has joined the season three cast. So that's really starting to shape up. I love the White Lotus. Season one and two were great. Looking forward to season three, but that won't even be out to 2025. Um, we got an article up with the executive producers of Echo explaining the Marvel show's TVMA rating. Um, and talk a little bit more about the show. So no spoilers, but check out that article if you'd like to read a little more. Congrats to Bookie, which is Chuck Lorre's new show starring Sebastian Maniscalco, has been renewed for season two over on Max. I liked Bookie season one. I thought it was a really fun little show and glad to see it picked up for season two. Nigel Lithgow is out as judge on So You Think You Can Dance amid some sexual assault lawsuits. So he had to drop out. So we'll see what happens with that. After Midnight, a new late night series hosted by Taylor Tomlinson is coming soon to CBS. 
So keep your eye out for that. Hacks the show Hacks, not Hacks, but you know, Hacks with an S. Hacks, which is on Max. It's long delayed season three will officially come out later this year in 2024 over on Max. Jonathan Majors gave his first um, interview since being found guilty of reckless assault and harassment last month. Um, So check out that interview if you'd like to see what he had to say about everything. We got an article up with our, with the most anticipated movies of 2024. This is just generic. My list has not come out yet. We're still looking to do our, am I still on the air here very soon where we will break down our top 10 of 2023 and our top 10 of 2024. So we'll see. So keep your eye out for that. We got the new trailer for Lisa Frankenstein. That's right. Catherine Newton and Cole Sprouse's new movie set to hit theaters on February 9th. I actually think this looks pretty good. It looks like it could be a lot of fun. So keep your eye out for that. Um, J.A. Bayona's latest film, The Society of Snow, tells the story of the 1972 Andes crash. It is now streaming over on Netflix, so make sure you check it out. I want to shout out something really cool that happened um, uh, for me and with this podcast just a couple nights ago. On last week's episode, I reviewed the show Run the Burbs, which is a really fun little sitcom that was on Canadian TV and then found its way to Hulu. So me and the fam have been watching it, and we've been really looking for a show that can fit the whole family, right? And it's hard. It's getting really, really hard. But Run the Burbs is one of those type of shows. Now, the lead actor on Run the Burbs is Andrew Fung. He, I loved in Kim's Convenience. So in Kim's Convenience, he played Simu Liu's best friend, um, and he was just phenomenal. So when I saw he was doing the show Run the Burbs, I was increasingly more interested because of him. So I reviewed the show on last week's episode, and um, that was that. And then over the weekend, I get a tweet from Andrew Fung himself, the lead actor of Run the Burbs and Kim's Convenience, He replied to me, he listened to the episode, he listened to my review, and he wrote me and he said, Don, I genuinely appreciate you checking out the show and watching it with the fam. You hit right on, you hit, you hit right on with what you were trying to do, and I'm so glad that you're digging it. Um, and I just, holy shit, that like made my whole year right there, that not only did Andrew see my tweet, but he listened to the show. And he liked our review and he wrote me, he took the time to write me and appreciate us watching it as a fam and checking out the show and how I tried to explain how it is good for the whole family because it's getting harder and harder. So many shows are mature and, and adult oriented that it's hard to watch things with your kids. And he said, that's what we're trying to do. That's the type of show we're trying to make. And that's what, you know, I'm glad you picked up on that. And thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much for listening and writing me, because you know when you're doing a little podcast like this, your hope is that somebody it, it'll stretch, right? That people will see it and they'll listen to it and they'll appreciate the time you put into it. And having him listen and appreciate it made my whole world. So thank you, Andrew, so much. Make sure you check out Run the Burbs over on Hulu. Season three just started this week over on Canadian TV. Hopefully, we'll get it soon on Hulu as well. So there you go. That is so awesome, man. Made me so, so excited. All right. Now now that I'm gushing, let me get back to it. Battlestar Galactica reboot from Mr. Robot Sam Esmail is moving forward. It is just named a new showrunner, and they're going to get things moving on that. I know a lot of people looking forward to that one big time. Uh, horror producers and Jason Blum and James Wan's newest movie, Night Swim, which we talked about earlier, it swam to only $12 million in its domestic box office debut for that second place opening behind Wonka. Station 19 will end this year with an abbreviated seventh season, so make sure you understand that. Um, James Gunn, he says, Peacemaker Season 2's place in the new DCU will not be confusing. Because I know a lot of people are saying, well, how are we going to know it was DCEU, now it's DCU? He says, it's not going to be confusing, you guys will get it, and we'll move on right there. So there you go. Uh, Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse writers promise a satisfying conclusion when the movie comes out. Martin Scorsese's new Jesus movie will be shot in 2024, and it's supposedly only 80 minutes long, which is crazy because Martin loves his three-plus-hour movies. I thought a movie about Jesus would be like five hours long, but it's going to be the shortest movie ever at just 80 minutes. Um, 
Connie Nelson confirms that Bob Odenkirk's sequel for Nobody 2 is still in the works and they do want to move forward on it. So that's cool to know. I would love to see a Nobody 2. The Marvels, it's going to hit digital next week. So keep your eyes out for that next Tuesday. And then next month in February will be when the uh, Blu ray um, and DVD will hit uh, markets. So keep your eyes out for that. Definitely check it out next week. For sure. Jacob Elordi is replacing Andrew Garfield on Guillermo del Toro's Frankenstein movie. Ed Brubaker's comic book Criminal has officially been picked up to series over on Amazon Prime. Joe Lynch's HP Lovecraft movie starts streaming on Shudder. It's called Suitable Flesh, so keep your eye out for that. AEW wrestler Swerve Strickland has been cast in a new slasher movie called Stiletto. David F. Sandberg, who did the Annabelle films but then stepped away to do a couple Shazams, is returning to his horror roots with a feature expansion uh, of two of his short films. So that's pretty cool there. I like that. Steven Spielberg is set to produce a new thriller in the vein of What Lies Beneath and Rosemary's Baby called Long Lost. Um, The Golden Globes had its largest audience in over four years, so that's pretty cool right there. NCIS Origins prequel series will feature a third franchise vet joining Young Gibbs and Mike Franks. The Golden Globes weren't the only awards handed out this weekend. We have your list of winners for the Creative Arts Emmy, so make sure you check that out. Um, Stranger Things 5 finally back in action, baby. We've waited so long, and Netflix has released a photo of the returning cast for the upcoming final season of Stranger Things uh, that is going back into production this week. You can see the whole cast there ready to rock, and we are ready long overdue for that Stranger Things, baby. Big, big news dropping today that the Mandalorian is officially heading to the big screen. The Mandalorian and Grogu is the official name of the new movie directed by John Favreau and produced by Favreau, Kathleen Kennedy, and Dave Filoni. The Mandalorian, the Mandalorian and Grogu will go into production later this year. This is the way. So that is awesome right there. And also with the announcement of the Mandalorian Grogu coming to the big screen, Ahsoka is in pre-production on season two right now, and that makes me so happy. I love Ahsoka season one. Glad to hear that they're moving forward with season two. We have the season two trailer of Tokyo Vice, which hits max on February 8th, so make sure you check that out. We have a little teaser trailer for Kevin James' new stand-up special, Irregardless, which comes out January 23rd on Prime Video. Uh, Caitlin Deaver, officially cast in The Last of Us season two, as Abby. This is magnificent casting. Caitlin has been rumored for this role for several months. It is now official. She's fantastic. And I think she's going to be a great Abby. This is going to be awesome right here. So congratulations to Caitlin Deaver swooping in for that role there. Um, we have the all new trailer for Three Body Problem, the mind blowing new series from David Benioff, D.B. Weiss, and Alex Wu. This premieres on Netflix March 21st. So make sure you check that out. Over on Netflix as well, Tina Fey will star in The Four Seasons, which will be a new series based on Alan Alda's 1981 film. The series is created by Fey and her 30 Rock collaborators. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um,. Regina King is Shirley Chisholm. Shirley is the iconic story of the first black congresswoman in her historic presidential campaign. It premieres on March 22nd. Our Flag Means Death has been canceled over on Max after just two seasons. I know a lot of people are super bummed about this one, but that one is done. Um, Rosie Perez is joining Billy Crystal in the new Apple TV Plus miniseries Before. No Good Deed, Dennis Leary, along with O.T. Fajbanel, is joining the cast of the new Netflix dark comedy. Connie Nielsen confirms that she will be in Gladiator 2, and she calls the sequel a magnificent spectacle. Guy Ritchie's new action movie starring Henry Cavill and Alan Richson will officially come out this year in 2024. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Love that title, love the cast. Chad, season two is finally coming. This was a show that was on TBS, got renewed for season two, and then C- TBS said, never mind. <laughs> it's the same thing like they did with uh, uh, Snowpiercer, right? So Chad's been trying to find a new home for season two. Roku picked it up for the Roku channel, and they released a new trailer for it today. So check out that. 
Ghostbusters Frozen Empire release date has slightly moved up Was going to come out the end of March It now comes out March 22nd So I got bumped up about a week But hey, we'll take it Tom Cruise has partnered with Warner Brothers for a new deal He'll be developing a lot of stuff with them going forward Marvel Zombies executive producer confirms that the Disney Plus series Is not following the comic book series They're going to do their own thing We have the trailer for Sexy Beast Which is a new epic crime saga coming to Paramount Plus We have the trailer for Mother's Instinct, which is a new movie starring Anne Hathaway and Jessica Chastain. New thriller that they're doing. I love that cast right there. I love both of them. Law & Order SVU has added David Kromholsky to the season 25 cast. Letterboxd is going to add TV show ratings later this year. I love that. We use Letterboxd a lot. And Annalie Ashford, who I really enjoy, she's going to portray Melissa Um, In a new show called Happy Face Melissa at the age of 15 Discovered that her beloved father Was the prolific serial killer Known as Happy Face So it's a new show called Happy Face That's coming to Paramount Plus And it's from the writers and executive producers Of Evil So I like that man, this sounds great This sounds like a really cool little show there And uh, on that note That is the end of our show We did it right there About the 40 minute mark Not too shabby So you can see the news Starting to pick back up Now that the holidays are done So let's get you on out of here Amiontheair.com is our official webpage Make sure you bookmark it Everything you need there Links to it all Listen to the show Amiontheair.com Like us on Facebook At facebook.com Slash Amiontheair Follow us on X Or Twitter At Amiontheair Myself directly at DXDonMega and that's uh, twitter.com slash if you want to type it in directly You can follow us on the same handles over on threads Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Google Podcast, Amazon Music We're on everything Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcast Make sure you subscribe to us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Hey, the podcast is streaming now on YouTube YouTube now does podcasts So our feed is right there And you can listen on the podcast Right there on YouTube if you'd like to check it out there as well So just hey, another avenue for you guys And um, thank you to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio And the Pop Culture Pros Follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio All one word, reddragonsradio.com And the Pop Culture Pros on Twitter at Pop Culture underscore Pros Thank you guys for always streaming our show on demand And that'll do it for me on this Tuesday, January the 9th I hope you guys have an amazing week We're going to be checking out back to the theater this weekend to check out The Beekeeper. Very excited about that one. Jason Statham kicking some ass, ready to go in 2024. Uh, First theatrical movie of the new year. I'm very excited. So take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all, peace. Red Dragon!